begin our lessons in photometric lighting um, by starting off and looking at our, our basic scene that we've created for project one. It's a simple room. Uh, all I've done really here is just put an architectural semi-gloss paint on the walls and a uh, tiling floor, uh, slightly reflective properties on the, on, on the floor. And the ceiling is just a basic flat white. Now, just looking at it in this rendering here, you notice that you can't even see the white color of the actual ceiling. And you've noticed that when you're in uh, using the, the, the default lighting that comes with Max, uh, that there's, there's, there's no diffuse light bouncing around the room. And all I have is uh, I changed my background to blue, uh, just to appear like the skies outside. And, and uh, you don't need to do that because we're going to uh, work around that. So again, we are, we are in uh, currently in Mentoray. To get back into Mentoray, you go to Rendering, Render Setup. Under Common, at the very bottom, you will see the word Assign Renderer. Next to Production, you want to hit the three dots and choose Mental Ray Rendering. And of course at the top where it says Render Setup, you'll see the word Mental Ray Renderer. Now it's important because that'll give us the Indirect Illumination Tool uh, tab that we're going to be working with here. So if you select that Indirect Illumination, you'll notice that uh, currently nothing is set, uh, but we will come in and uh, turn some of these features on. Now to begin, uh, let's first look at uh, how lighting works. Here we have the Kelvin scale and the way the Kelvin scale works is uh, down here on the left side the numbers represent the actual temperature in Kelvin and uh, red being uh, the, the least um, hot I guess you could say and uh, as things get warmer, hotter uh, they go more from a orange to a yellow to a white to a blue. Okay, and it's important to know uh, not to memorize these numbers so much, but to understand the numbers simply because, depending on what kind of light source we're working with, uh, to get the maximum uh, amount of quality out of our renderings, we need to know: uh, is it going to be early sunrise? Uh, is it going to be noon during the day where direct sunlight's coming in? Is there an overcast day? Um, so it's important to know these numbers because when we set our Kelvin scale on our photometric lights, it's not necessarily determining the intensity of how bright it is, it's more determining the color that's coming from the light. So now we come back into our scene and let's get ready to apply from photometric lighting. Start uh, by coming up to the Create tab and Lights, which is the third over, will get us into photometric. Now we use standard before, but we're going to do photometric here. And the first thing we do is hit the free light button. And immediately when the free light button is touched there, you're going to get a message that comes up and is letting you know that, hey, 3ds Max knows if you're going to use a, a, a photometric light, we need to adjust the photographic exposure control, which we had looked at earlier. Go ahead and hit yes. Now that automatically is going to give you a little bit more attention to uh, your scene. It's going to get a little brighter, but there's still no lights in the scene. So let's begin by dropping uh, one of those lights right inside the middle of our room. And we're going to go ahead and render. Now what you're going to get right off the bat is a severe amount of washout. And what that's pretty much doing is it's taking all the color out of the scene because our intensity is set so high by default. So don't worry, we're going to go ahead and work on that. Now a free light, it works a lot like an Omni light, it's just kind of throwing light in all directions, but unlike an Omni light, we can actually go in and adjust things such as its intensity, its direction of light, and, and uh, as well as control it through a shape. So we're going to start by looking at the templates here, and under it says select the template, there are um, several different presets. So even though we, we built our house to scale, if we wanted to see what it would look like with a 40 watt incandescent light bulb in the middle of our room, we could set that preset. It's going to automatically change everything where it needs to be. And now if we do a reset and render, 
it's going to show us that that incandescent bulb is actually going to change the color of our walls. Okay, so uh, in real life, we don't have just a, a light hanging from the middle of a room such as this. So let's go back in, and we're going to change that back to just the word bulb lights. And if you hit render, it's still going to hold the same properties. So until we change that back, it's uh, we're stuck with that. Okay, so hit and cancel, and you can pretty much hit any kind and try them out. Next we can do is go edit undo and take that back to the standard light. There we go. Now we can turn the light on and off. Now that way you can set up lights in the windows, lights in fixtures, and turn them on and off as you need for rendering. Also apply shadows using the same shadow properties as we had before and also being able to exclude those shadows. Next is uniform spherical and what it's doing here is it's shooting direction uh, light in all directions. We're going to be using photometric web. So once you've done that go ahead and do another render and you're going to notice that the light is going to push in one direction. Even though the the light looks like a sphere it's pretty much sending the light in a uh, almost like a wall towards one direction. Now we're going to control that wall here in a little bit. Next we have intensity color. Okay, and again you can select the presets if you're working with fluorescence or halogens or anything such as that or you can force the Kelvin scale on it. And remember these numbers as we go up higher we come down to a 2000 we're going to be more on the red scale or if we kick it up to like 8,000, we're going to be up to a bluish, whitish scale. So depending on the type of light you want, if you want daytime light or you want uh, incandescent light, you're going to have the ability to go in and change that as well. Now I want to do a little bit like sunlight, so I'm going to keep it kind of bright here, like up in the 8,000 range. The next is our intensity. And by default, this is set at 1500. If I go and kick that down to say 150, we can do a render. And notice now that we're starting to gain some color back in our scene. It's still bright. We can still see that there's this light source up here that's overwhelming. And it's pushing in one direction, but ultimately we're starting to get color back. So we're going to keep lowering the intensity until we're comfortable with it even if it's something as small as 25 uh, because we're going to have the ability to adjust how many times that light bounces around the scene. So in our next lesson we'll go ahead and start looking at additional features uh, with our free light.